Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day. Previously, we did learn on how to determine the limit of a function by using analytical approach or analytical method when x approaches a point. But this time around, we would like to study on how to determine limit of a function by using analytical method when x approaches infinity. By the end of this video, you as a student should be able to differentiate what is negative infinity and positive infinity. And last but not least, you should be able to compute limit at infinity. If we try to recall in the previous video, there are two ways on how you can make use of analytical method to determine the limit of a function. The first one is very straightforward where you can use limits laws as you can simply solve it by using direct substitution as if the limit of a function is somehow like what you have learned before which is you evaluate the function at a given point. But when the answer is written in its indeterminate form, such as negative over, uh, not negative, but infinity over infinity, 0 over 0, 1 to the power of infinity, 0 to the power of 0, 0 to the power of infinity, and others, you are required to simplify the given function so that you can apply the limits law techniques flawlessly. And the, the techniques you are required to use is algebraic technique. When the function is written in its polynomial form, then you can apply factorization. Or when the function is written in its radical form, you have to use multiply of conjugate. For your information, when it comes to infinity, infinity is very large numbers. When you have positive infinity, as if positive infinity is explained about numbers that too big. Meanwhile, if you come across with the notation something like negative infinity, then it should tell you that it will give you a very small number. If you do some searches online, you will see that when the question asks you to evaluate what is 1 over infinity, we will never know the correct answer. But we do know for sure the limit of a function where the function is 1 over x as x approaches infinity is equal to zero. Now let's take a look at this simple example where the function is 2x plus 1 over x minus 3 and this function will produce this graph. If the question asks you to evaluate the limit of this function by using the graphical method when x approaching negative infinity so basically, negative infinity will demonstrate x as x tends to be lesser, lesser, and lesser. In this case, this will be our direction for x approaching negative infinity. And according to what we have over here, this dotted line is y is equal to 2. Therefore, the limit of a function fx as x approaches negative infinity will give you 2. Meanwhile, if the question asks you to evaluate the limit of a function when x approaching or approaches positive infinity, positive Im infinity demonstrate number that tend to become bigger, bigger and bigger. So, I will have this 
particular arrow and eventually as x approaches positive infinity by right you can see that the limit of a function as x approaches positive infinity is also 2. Previously, by using analytical method, when you try to evaluate the limit of a function when the function is written in polynomial, you have to simplify it by using factorization approach or if the function is written in radical function, you are required to simplify it by using multiplication of conjugate. But when it comes to x approaching infinity, when the function is written in rational function, where you have numerator part is represented by px, meanwhile the denominator part is represented by qx, you have to do something so that you are able to solve the question flawlessly. For example, I did write some summary over here. Simplify the function by dividing all terms with the highest degree. Then, if the highest degree of p is somehow larger than the highest degree of qx, then you can say that your answer will be infinity or negative infinity. Other than that, if the degree of px is less than the highest degree of qx, then you can safely assume your, your limit will be 0. But when the degree of px is equal to the highest degree of terms of qx, then the answer is the coefficient of the highest degree at the numerator divided by the coefficient of the highest degree at the denominator. Now, let's go into few examples and let's try to answer them. Now, let's try to answer few questions for example 1. Let's take a look at question A. When you try to answer this question, you can apply several laws in limit laws to solve this question. The first one is sum and difference rule such that you can find the limit separately. Limit of 3 as x approaches infinity plus limit of 1 over x squared as x approaches infinity. The first term is very straightforward which is 3. Before this, we have discussed when we have this kind of question such that limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity, it will become 0 because when you use your try to use your calculator, try to pick up a very large number. If you are able to find 1000, I can also find 2000 for example. So if you try to divide the answer, you will get 1 divided by very large number. You tend to be, you, your answer will tend to be very small. And at some point of time, as x approaches infinity, you will get 0. Same thing will happen to 1 over x squared because if you have very large number to the power of 2 as x approaches infinity it will 2 become 0 so the answer is 3 for this particular question